Hello, everybody, and welcome to our leadership podcast, Banking on Innovation. I'm so pleased to invite today Aaron Pryor to the Banking on Innovation podcast. Aaron is the EVP and Chief Marketing Officer and Client Experience Head at First Horizon Bank. Aaron, welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having me today. It's so great to have you. Um, Aaron, I understand you were a competitive athlete at SMU, holding the record for the number of kills in volleyball. I'd love for you to just share, how did that experience being a competitive athlete prepare you for a career in banking? Well, that was quite some time ago, but yes, I um, I did play competitive sports and I played competitive volleyball uh, through college. And, you know, I tell people quite a bit that being an athlete had such an impact on, I think, just who I am as a person and how I, um, you know, interact in, in my career. You know, I would never have thought I would work in banking if we were being, just to be honest, <laughs> 10 or 12 years ago, Most of us didn't. Uh, I made the switch from, yeah, I made the switch and uh, I came over to banking and, you know, I think as an athlete, you learn time management, you learn on a team sport, how you collaborate and work together and you really navigate different personalities and coming together around a goal and an objective. And it's so applicable in, in you know, the professional world, regardless of industry. Uh, I think there's a lot of a lot of carryover uh, there, especially for me. Yeah, it is. It is interesting how many people kind of serendipitously end up in in banking, even if it wasn't a uh, a primary career choice to begin with. Not many kids they say, "I want to grow up and be be in banking." But um, that's great to hear. So you've had experiences not just in banking, but in the wealth sector and, and direct banking at USAA, and now in an executive capacity with a major regional bank, First Horizon. How has your approach to leadership evolved as you've progressed in your career? I think you carry forward things you learn, you know, like you just asked me about, you know, my career playing sports, just like I carried some of that into my professional career, you carry pieces from every experience you've had with you. Um, I think you learn to lead both by example. I feel very fortunate. I have had some of the most amazing mentors and leaders that I've learned from within, you know, my past and, and past experiences. I've seen some examples of things that I wouldn't want to do as a leader as well. And I think you just have to, um, you know, figure out who do you want to be? I, I had to, when I came into this role, I thought really hard about what do I want to be as a leader? Who do I want to be? How do I want to come across? And for me, it is, I want to be authentic, and I, I feel like that word today is used a lot, but I want to lead by example, and I want to be a leader that people feel that they can talk to. I have an open door policy. Anybody on the team can call me at any time and, and have a conversation, uh, and also I want to surround myself with people smarter than I am. I think that's critical to success. I want to constantly learn from those around me, not just peers and other leaders, but also my directs and leaders on the marketing team and the people that, you know, at every level, you can always be learning. And I think it's just critical to listen and learn. Um, and I think that's really been an evolution for me is understanding that I don't want to always be the, I don't want to be the smartest person in the room. Uh, and I think that's, that's key. That's been key for me in terms of success. Speaking of leading, Aaron, you are leading innovation in marketing and a, and a transformation, a marketing transformation at First Horizon. What did you initially learn from customers when you, when you joined the bank that helped you understand where to focus to drive impact? When I first started, we did, the, you know, the client experience group was doing labs. There was some good feedback in, in that area. We had a real opportunity to build out our insights capabilities. And so I've been with First Horizon, I'm coming up on two years. One of the first things I did when I reorganized the team was create and in the in analytics, marketing analytics, but also marketing insights. 
So building out that research capability to take on looking at your awareness, your MPS, your CSAT, what are the opportunities where your clients feel that you are, you know, really strong or where they think you're really strong and where do they feel that you have opportunity to grow into so that we can really listen. And I think pulling that macro research into the micro research with the labs and the listening capabilities and putting that together, we've been able to really build true understanding of where our clients are and prospects and where they want to go. So it helps to give us a little bit of a path. So we're not necessarily guessing, but we're also looking at a wider constituency to determine what's right for our clients. And and as we look to grow, and obviously the business has goals, how do we get there and create that, you know, really superlative client experience, whether, you know, it's, it's the client experience is the totality of the touches. So it could be in person, it's digital, it's advertising. I always, we talk a lot about internally um, owning the moment. And what that means is every person in the company owns a piece of the client experience, whether you're in risk or whether you're in you know, um, IT, there's something that you're doing that's building some some piece of that. And so as we look at what does that experience in, in its totality become by really listening and understanding what the clients and prospects want and where the industry is going, you can make a, a much more informed decision. And so I think we've gotten to a really good space there uh, and we're making some progress. It's really admirable how you're leading with the client experience. And, and along those lines, you, you've invested also in, in better understanding customers through the use of customer data to better know them better. Why is this important and, and how does that impact the customer experience? The data now today, we're also data rich. Uh, you know, everybody, it's, it's a really big topic, I think, across every industry. And we have, so at First Horizon, we implemented uh, the first Salesforce CDP in the US, yep. the customer data platform. Yep. And that's been really critical because what that's enabling us to do is stitch together a profile um, and, and really better understand what the client is doing and how they're interacting with us uh, across the board. It also um, helps us to manage privacy and consent. There's a lot of things right now around privacy and consent and as you go cookie list. Uh, and, and so I think using data, whether it be your analytics and insight data or the behavioral qualitative you know, piece as well, I think if you really have that full view, it's going to help you better serve the client and better know, you know, what is the client's next best best action? You know, I made the kind of the tongue in cheek, I never thought I would work in banking. And a lot of people are like, oh, is it boring? No, we have the ability to help our clients really get to their goals. I mean, people, whether it's buying a home, saving for college, saving for retirement, starting a business, growing their business, it's really helping people, you know, move forward in whatever is right for them. So if we know what their, you know, interests are, what they're looking to do with their goals through our comprehensive data set, we can then help to provide the advice or to provide the next best product or things that are more relevant to them to help them on their on their journey forward. Fascinating. You know, Aaron, you talked about being the first to implement the customer data platform from uh, from Salesforce. I'm just keen to understand. Sometimes it can be, let's just say, some anxiety filled um, uh, theme when you're kind of being first to implement something. Is there is there a certain way that you've approached that to be able to feel comfortable, not just leading with a capability, but also being first around a new technology? Well, it also goes back to something I said earlier, which is surround yourself with very smart people. So my <laughs> head of marketing technology and operations, uh, his name is Jason Scott. I will give him a shout out because he's fantastic. Cool. Uh, he was instrumental uh, in helping us you know, put implement the CDP and implement a lot of our um, components that enable the marketing technology and enable the strategy and the vision that we have today. Uh, in regard to being first, I mean, A, somebody's got to do it. 
And B, I, I fully believe in the 80-20 rule. And we even kind of talk internally, maybe more like 70-30, 75-25 rule. Um, it's all about learning and you've got to lean in there. And we're still learning. We we implemented the CDP in June uh, and, and we've got a few journeys running through it, but we're still learning. I, I, we're learning into it. And, and so I think sometimes you have to take a little bit of a risk and put yourself out there uh, to reap the benefit. So I didn't, I didn't, I never even thought twice about when Jason came and said, Hey, this is what I think we need to do. And this will really help us, you know, here. I was like, done, let's do this. So yeah. I, I didn't honestly really think about it. Uh, yeah. but we are learning into it and we're still, um, you know, pulling it together, but the, the reward there is going to be really great and has even in the short time that we've had it up by being able to look at, you know, the various channels. When, so when I say the way a client is at interacting, it includes paid media, it includes email, the website, all the different pieces. So that also has a downstream effect um, for us on attribution and analytics and, and all the things. So it's mutually beneficial um, for both the client or prospect and for uh, the business. Really important lessons in what you shared there. You know, one of the things I appreciate about uh, about the perspective you're bringing and and many of our guests is that they're often leaning in and trying something and doing something that is, let's say, it may be the first time. But as as an industry, we the banking industry commonly is let's say fast followers or you know rapid adopters. But somebody has to be leading with the capability to be able to strive to achieve more. And I appreciate that's the that's the perspective that that you're certainly bringing in this uh, as part of this marketing transformation. Thank you. So leading banks also are really leaning in, Aaron, on delivering personalized insights for customers. How how do you think? What's your perspective on how personalized insights and marketing promotions or campaigns will converge over time? They already do. I think we are there today. So with the the personalized, if you know your client and you're already, even if you're just dipping your toe into personalization, it's part of the overall client journey. And so at First Horizon, we talk a lot about, you know, our purpose is to provide capital and counsel. And the capital is not just the money, right? You can get money from any bank. It's also the human capital and the advice and the counsel on what it is your goal is. I mentioned earlier, uh, whether it's growing your business or buying a home or you know whatever that role that is, it's it's critical to provide that advice. But if you're providing that advice and you know your client, then it makes sense to provide them an applicable offer. And so I think the marketing message and the marketing offer needs to be aligned with the client journey, uh, which is part of the personalization. So I think we're there. Yeah, it's really an exciting period. And, you know, just from my perspective, also just to be provocative, and I should probably be careful when, you know, conveying this to a, to a chief marketing officer. But, but, but I believe that the traditional marketing banner will eventually go away and it'll be replaced with evidence-based insights, which show that you really know the customer based on their behavior. You are advising them to be in a different product or a new product, and then providing evidence as to how much that may benefit them. And that's a very different way of interacting with customers than just having a modeled banner in front of them. I think that's right. And I think it, it is an evolution you know, I, I'm not going to say today, if you went to the side, it would be like, hey, Jody, this is what you need, you know, but but we're working to get there. And I do believe with the data and technologies that exist, uh, it's going to be a very, very fast follow. But I think to, to you know, as you talked about, when do they converge? It's now. It, it has to be now. You've also had, you know, the world changed in the pandemic. People talk about it all the time. And, you know, financial services and some of the other industries typically, you know, have been thought to lag 
behind maybe a consumer packaged good or other types of industries. And where we are today is the expectation from customers is they want what they want now and they expect their institution to know them. And or, you know, or whomever it is, whatever the target is, whatever the thing they're looking for to know them and to know what they want. And so as a financial institution, we do have a lot of really great customer data and customer insight that we really should know our clients. Uh, The bankers know their clients. And as an institution, we know their clients and we have a huge opportunity in front of us to align that piece, to really add the value um, as an institution. I I, I do believe people love um, their bankers. They love getting that human to human interaction. You know, I don't think that was totally lost during the pandemic. It's It's not an either or, it's a both and. And so how do we help the banker and the client by providing that more personalized advice, the personalized offer to the client to show that we as an institution know and understand them and can help them get to where they want to go. See, people think, have the perception that banking is boring. This is exciting stuff. <laughs> I agree. Well, you know, it, I agree. Yeah, I know. I know. More people should know. It. It's exciting. Well, so <laughs> it, it may be exciting, Aaron, but it also comes with its challenges. So what do you see as some of the primary obstacles to delivering these kinds of customer solutions and experiences that are highly personalized and that help customers improve their financial well-being? I think across the board at various institutions, you typically have a number of different systems. I think connecting the back end sometimes can be challenging and finding you know, your record of truth or the system of truth, whatever it is you want to call it. Um, There's a lot of data protection uh, conversation happening. Financial services is heavily, heavily regulated. And so I think those sometimes, they're not necessarily inhibiting, but they slow things a bit. Uh, and, And I think it goes back to financial services have historically lagged on some of these things and been slow adopters on some of these things because, um, you know, I don't I don't really even know why to be honest. I, I think it's just been the the industry, you know, some of some of the different expectations around, uh, you know, the various financial services components. But I think today we're at a point where it's expected, and you know, it, it takes time. But by aligning the marketing technology with the sales enablement and your CRM and your data partners and your IT partners, it's getting those groups to really sit at the table and collaborate and align on how these things are going to run in the back end that ultimately feed your vision and strategy for the overarching organization and lines of business And, and ultimately provide that client experience from the digital perspective, not necessarily the human to human that we were talking about earlier. Yeah. And you also mentioned earlier that all the channels play a role in the customer experience. What's your perspective on how the digital and the banker or the assisted channels need to evolve to deliver a superior experience in a, in a more aligned or connected fashion? They have to be lockstep. Your client or prospect is going to interact in their channel of choice. So we talk about this a lot in marketing. I can't force someone to interact in a channel. I mean, I could try, but they're not going to. If they want to, you know, interact on their phone or they're going to be on certain websites and they're going to get a digital ad or they prefer email or SMS or in person or whatever, maybe they want to call the call center, whatever it may be. They're going to interact how they want to interact when they want to do it. So you've got to have that 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 heartbeat. For us, it's the CRM system. So the client relationship management system so that we can see where people are interacting, 
and what they're looking at and how how they want to be communicated with. And that enables us to see it from a digital perspective, but also share that with the banker. Plus, you know, where, where we're sitting on, on, on the back end, it helps if I know when the banker has had the conversation or if someone has reached out so that we're not overly communicating with a client either, that we are adding value to them through whichever channel it is and through the banker. I just think that that connectivity is critical to aligning and defining the ultimate experience. A, a big misstep that tends to happen is that over communication. I mean, how many times I think have we all had that where maybe you're getting a phone call and you've gotten 10 emails and you're like, wait, I just talked to somebody. I don't really need to. And, and this is not banking agnostic. This is just in general. And you're like, well, I've already had that. There's a disconnect somewhere within, you know, the company that I'm I'm interacting with. And so I think it's it's you've got to have that heartbeat in the center. That really is where the client experience lives, if you will. And it connects all the various touch points so that there's a known um, there's a known map or a known a known understanding of how you are engaging the client and the client is engaging you. Yeah. You talked about the importance of capturing the customer data as part of a CDP, but really what you're alluding to now is how do you translate that data into, you know, actionable advice, what gets delivered through digital banker and other kinds of medium to be able to help that customer move forward in terms of whatever they're trying to achieve. And that's, I mean, it's a very exciting um, set of possibilities and one which I think the entire industry needs to continue to invest and just get better at doing to be able to meet the meet the needs and the growing and the rising expectations of customers in this regard. You know, the expectation across the board for customers is high in any industry or any, yeah. you know, any area. And it's just, it goes back to how do you meet that? Yeah. In fact, I mean, you could argue that the uh, you know the bar is really being set by other experiences, you know, outside of financial services, but um, but certainly like money management is so important to customers that that they would uh, they would certainly desire uh, more advice, being better understood, and yeah, a trusted advisor to help help improve their their day to day banking and achieve their goals. So Aaron, uh, First Horizon is being acquired by TD Bank in a transaction that's expected to close in the first quarter. And it's so important that the customers of the of the combined entity see the degree of innovation by the combined forces. What what can be done today to demonstrate the the greater innovation on behalf of customers that's likely to come? Well, today we can't do a whole lot as a combined organization because we have to wait for legal day one and regulatory approval. But there is a lot of great conversation happening around how do we make the transition for our clients, the First Horizon clients to the TD, you know, platforms as seamless as possible. And so there is a lot of opportunity to be a little bit of maybe an incubator for some Mm -hmm. of those things. Um, TD has a great innovation, uh, you know, arm and a a great innovation mindset and culture. They're very client experience centric. And so how do we just ensure that, you know, the client centricity we have at First Horizon and the great relationships that exist there today, you know, translate and, and really map to the TD group. And I think there's a lot of opportunity there. I think it's a really, really positive step for both institutions and for our clients. I think there's a lot of great things that, that are going to come out of this. It's an, certainly an exciting time for for First Horizon and for TD and, and in particular your customer franchise. So I wish you the best in that, uh, in that transition and hope that uh, some of the, some of the, the, the seeds and foundations that you're putting in place now can really carry over and, and deliver even, even greater opportunities for customers moving forward. Yeah, I think together the the companies really do, um, you know, there's a lot of similarity and a lot of mindset similarity. So I, I do think they're very complementary. 
and you know each each company will add value uh and i think together will be a very very strong fit so it's really exciting so thank you yeah yeah so aaron just to uh to bring us to close i'd love to hear your perspective on what will customers demand from banks and credit unions in the next three to five years that the industry isn't prepared for or fully um, ready for just yet probably more, I think it'll just be continued advance in digital and technology. And, you know, the real time experiences that we talked about before across the board, you know, I, I think it's a really interesting time in general for business. We're seeing people lean in more towards some of the human to human aspect that I, I think a lot of people missed, to be honest, over the past a few years. So I think just continuing to find that balance to the human interaction, the digital interaction, and the capability to be more uh, responsive faster, I just see that accelerating. I, I think the personalization, all the all the pieces we've talked about today, I think are going to be critical and will continue to accelerate over the next, you know, two to five years. I, I really don't see that slowing down. Yeah, what's exciting is it, it feels like the industry is is in a period of more accelerated or compressed innovation. And there's so much more to go, particularly around this area of knowing customers delivering personalized interactions and, and experiences, and then working across channels as well. So while we're taking important strides, it's exciting to, to think about what's, you know, how do you overcome these obstacles to make it an even better experience? Because when the industry can bring, and banks can bring the whole bank to bear, then we know customers will really benefit. Yeah, and I think that, that's a critical piece, what you just said too. It's removing that friction within that experience and then also by knowing the customer and, and providing that advice and helping them to grow, how do you then introduce them in a responsible uh, way to the other capabilities you have within the firm that can enable and help them with their life goals? Uh, and I, I just think that's a huge opportunity. You know, banking is not just about the money. That's the commodity portion. You can get a loan. You can get a checking account from pretty much anywhere. It's about the experience, um, the trust and the relationship that is really critical in this industry. And it's it's how do you build that and how do you make it easy for people to connect uh, with, with the brand and the bankers in general. And so, I, I, again, I see that just really, really accelerating um, and continuing to be, it's a, it's a focus today, but I, I see it continuing to be a focus moving forward. Well, Aaron, I wanted to thank you for being on our Banking on Innovation podcast. And I applaud you for the marketing transformation efforts that you and your team are taking on and wish you the best of luck. And thank you so much for providing your perspectives to our audience. Thank you, Jody. I really enjoyed uh, getting the time to chat. So appreciate it. Thank you for joining another episode of Banking on Innovation. Make sure you subscribe to get future podcast episodes or follow us on Twitter at Personetics or on Personetics.com.